Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So today we have another beautiful blue sky and it's a little windy, but the wind is expected to die down later tonight. So we're going to do something fun. We're going to be imaging a target that I've been wanting to image for a long time and it is the Bubble Nebula or NGC 7635 in the constellation Cassiopeia. So this video is going to be the first video in a four part video series that I will be posting on my YouTube channel. So in this video, we're going to be talking about the equipment that I used to acquire the data and how I set up my sequence in Nina using the advanced sequencer. In part two, I'll show you how I pre-process the data in PixInsight. And then in part three and four, we'll be working on the post-processing of the nebula in order to get an awesome result. All right, let's get started. All right, so let me talk about the equipment that I use to acquire the data. So let's start with the telescope. It is an Astrotech AT130 EDT. So it is a triplet apochromatic refractor, 130 millimeter diameter, F7, 910 millimeter focal length. The mount is from Ioptron. It is the CEM70, and I also use the Ioptron Tripeer. Let me talk about the imaging train. So I use a field flattener from Telescope Service a ZW off-axis guider. For the guide camera, I use a ZW ASI 290mm mini. Of course, I use the off-axis guider focuser that I designed and built and talked about in a previous video. Then I have a, an eight position filter wheel, also from ZW, uh, with 31 millimeter unmounted filters. And finally, I have a ZW ASI 533mm Pro, so monochrome camera. And then you probably notice I have a ZW EAF, which is an electronic automated focuser, which allows me to refocus automatically throughout the night. So I have a mini computer here. It is a Melee Quieter 2 uh, mini computer to control everything, and a Pegasus Astro Pocket Power Box Advance, which is used as a USB hub for power distribution and also to control the dew heater band uh, that you can see in the front. I also have here, you probably recognize, the automated telescope cover, which I designed and built and talked about in a previous video. So everything that you see here can be controlled remotely from inside the house. So let's go inside and I'm going to show you how I set up my sequence in Nina using the advanced sequencer. All right, so I am connected to my mini computer via remote desktop and I have already connected all of the equipment in Nina. So before I start working on a sequence, I like to see what the object looks like first. So let's go to Sky Atlas and let's look for our target. And then let's go ahead and click on SLU. And here we're looking at the live feed from my security camera and you can see the telescope slowing. All right, so let's not forget to open our telescope cover. And now let's go ahead and do a plate solve. All right, so now we are centered on the target. So let's go ahead and start the guider. And now we can do, uh, we can start an exposure, maybe 60 seconds. This looks pretty good. So what I recommend is before you start working on your sequence, do an exposure on each of your filter to figure out how long you will need to expose for each filter. So. What I settled on is five minutes for H-alpha, five minutes for O3, five minutes for S2. And then in RG and B, I only exposed for 15 seconds per filter. Uh, if I exposed any more than that, I, I run the risk of saturating too many stars. So do this, and then once you have these numbers, go back to the advanced sequencer and start working on the sequence. So let's do that next. 
All right, so let's go ahead and create a sequence. So start by clicking on the Sequencer tab and then Advanced Sequencer. And you should be presented with this UI. Let's start with the Sequence Start Area. I usually drag a parallel instruction set and inside that set, I'm going to ask the sequence to unpark the scope, cool the camera to negative five Celsius degrees, and then also move the focuser. So in my case, I know that my focus point is roughly 14,300. And then I like to ensure that I know which filter I'm on at the beginning of the sequence. So I usually add this instruction. All right, so now let's start working on the part of the sequence where we acquire data. So go back to Sky Atlas and then click on Add Target to Sequence, Sequencer Deep Sky Object Sequence. And we have this new block here. So inside instructions, usually what I do is I add three sequential instruction sets. So the first one will be target preparation instructions. And then I'll add another one, which I'll name, for example, narrow band. And then one last one, which will be target closure instructions. All right. So now in our target preparation instructions, one of the things that we want to do is we probably want to wait for a specific time. And it makes sense to wait until astronomical dusk. We probably also want to wait for the object to reach a specific altitude, so for example, 45 degrees. You don't want to start imaging when the object is very low on the horizon. And at that point, you probably also want to um, open the, the telescope cover. So because it's represented as a switch, we just have to set the switch value to one. And then we want to slew and center. And then we want to run an autofocus. And then at that point, we want to start guiding. All right. And in the target closure instructions, we will stop guiding and we'll close the telescope cover. Now, all we need to do is a few instructions here to actually acquire data. So for that, we'll use smart exposure. And so let's say we do 24 exposures each of 300 seconds. So that's two hours with HA. And at this point, we can duplicate this instruction and then duplicate it again. And then we can simply change the filter. And we will dither every exposure. So one thing that is very important is to add the triggers here. So we are going to run an autofocus after HFR increase of 5%. And then also very important is meridian flip. So the last thing that we need to do now is the sequence end area. So for this, I'm going to use again, a parallel instruction set. And we're going to want to park the telescope, warm the camera, And then we're going to want to retract the focuser. I never retract it to 
0 because of backlash. So I'll usually retract it to 200. And then I like to make sure that uh, I know which filter I'm on at the end of a sequence as well. And so I'll usually bring it back to my luminance filter. And there you have it. This is our sequence. So you can make it as complicated as you want. You can, for example, add exposures here to capture RGB stars. You can have multiple targets. You can really do whatever you want. And that's the power of the advanced sequencer in Nina. It's an amazing tool, and I really encourage you to explore it. So in the end, I captured over several nights 10 hours of H-alpha data, 8 hours of O3, and 8 hours of S2, and 20 minutes of red, green, and blue, respectively. You don't really need that much time on RGB stars. On one night, I captured a time lapse of the telescope slewing around the sky while it's capturing the data. So I'm going to show it to you now. I'm going to speed it up, and I hope you enjoy it. All right, so I hope that you found this video helpful. We are going to be back in a couple of weeks with the first processing video in the series. So make sure that you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss an episode. Until next time, thank you for watching.